and welcome to 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and tonight's guest is Talia Elitzer, CEO and co-founder of God Mode. Talia began her career as a booking agent for William Morris Endeavor, otherwise known as WME, and eventually she found her way to Capitol Records working as an A&R on projects like Beck's Morning Phase and Katy Perry's Prism. In 2017, she and her co-founder, Nick Sylvester, launched their industry collective, God Mode. The company is known for powering the rise of Grammy Award-nominated Channel Triss and JPEG Mafia, both of which have garnered hundreds of millions of streams, sold-out tours, and widespread praise. Most recently, the label launched their publishing arm with the announcement of their first signing, Emmy. Standing out among a handful of female CEOs in the industry, Talia has been recognized by Variety, Authority Magazine, and Music Business Worldwide. So without further ado, Talia, thanks so much for being here. How's it going? Thanks Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Excited to get started. So are you ready for the first question? I'm ready. All right. Imagine for a second you're sitting down with your 25-year-old self. What one piece of advice would you give her on a personal note? And what one piece of advice would you give her from a business perspective? I think the advice I would give myself is to trust my instincts more. I think what's funny about the music industry is that it's a, you know, everyone, everyone always wants to know kind of what the, what the next thing is going to be and what the next, you know, the next buzzy, whether genre or type of artist or everything. And I think I wish that I had followed my instincts a little bit more as a 25 year old and to be more confident in what I knew and what I knew was current because now I'm an, you know, an older person who, uh, who has to ask the 25 year olds what they know. (laughs) Oh, come on. You're not that old. (laughs) (laughs) I'm older than 25. So, (laughs) (laughs) so that's a personal. So do you have anything on the business perspective or does it kind of go hand in hand? Yeah, it kind of goes hand in hand. I think, you know, I, I worked a lot of big companies in my career and I learned a lot from those jobs, but I also probably learned the most from figuring it out on my own Mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of learning as you go and um, potentially, honestly, to kind of have uh, gone out on my own sooner than when I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just about to ask. So was the end goal always to kind of branch off and start your own thing? Honestly, not necessarily. Like I think, you know, when I got my job as uh, an A&R at Capitol Records, I was sort of like, this is it. This is the dream (laughs) job. You know, I did it. And then the job was just so different than what I thought it was in my mind. And, Mm -hmm. um, and I had sort of started doing some of the, my God mode work, you know, as my side hustle. And I was like, oh, why do I like this a lot more than, you know, my day job? And uh, it just kind of naturally, naturally flowed into that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of hype around A and R, but I think it is true as you get into it. It's still still super exciting, but it's definitely not what you always expect it to be. No, it's really different now. It's all based on, you know, like data and research and it's not really what, you know, what you see in the movies and and all of that anymore. And and to be honest, a lot of that work, that artist development work and kind of finding those talent is now it's now really management. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, and that's sort of, I'm doing that traditional job. It's just called something else in 2022. So taking it all the way back to when you started God mode, I'm curious Mm -hmm. to know what advice would you give somebody that's like just branching out and wanting to start their own label or publishing arm or management company, or as you call it, the whole collective, (laughs) what advice would you give? honestly, just to go out and meet as many people as you can. And it doesn't need to be like the most important people. I think a lot of, you know, I was very lucky that my first job ever, I was, I literally started in the mailroom at William Morris. And so a lot of my friends who were, we were all kids together, you know, pushing a mail cart. Uh, everyone is now doing these jobs. You know, they were, we all started at the same time and everyone's now has these are important people in lots of different places. And so I think if you really make friends with your peers, uh, Mm. that really can go a long way. Definitely. All right. Jumping into question two, every industry has its dirty little secrets. And we all know that it's no different in the music industry. And sometimes people think that's a bad thing, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they can be good. What's one secret you would like to share with our listeners about the industry? Hmm. Um, I think a secret is that anyone can win and that it's not like, yes, of course there are, you know, the people you read about in 
you know, lots of old white guys that you read about in the trades <laughs> all the time, you know, running stuff, but it's really kind of the wild west now more than ever. And mm -hmm. songs and artists kind of pop out of obscurity. And some of the biggest artists in the last few years, like, you know, Lil Nas or someone like that, like really, you know, can kind of come out of nowhere. And we really have the tools at our disposal now. And I think, you know, it, it may not feel like that. It's very overwhelming, but I think that that's definitely uh, kind of the, you know, what's happening right now. And so mm -hmm. I don't know if that, if that counts as a secret, but, uh, <laughs> but that, that's one thing. Another thing too, I guess, is that it, uh, you know, there aren't very, there aren't a ton of women who work in music. Um, but I actually think, you know, which is, which can be hard of course, but I actually think that that's a real advantage too. And a lot of the artists that I work with, like prefer to work with women. And I think it's just a different tone. And I think that can really be used to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I think what you were saying the first with the first one, kind of they can, artists can come from anywhere now. I think especially with social media and everything, like I even see them, they're coming internationally as well. And yeah, they all want to come yeah. into the US. So you can really get your start anywhere. Totally. Totally. Awesome. Well, like I said in the beginning, it goes super fast. So we're already <laughs> at the last question. Throughout your career, I can only imagine that you've been asked plenty of questions, whether for an industry conference, the media, or even a promotion. But throughout all of those interviews and all of those questions, I'll bet there was one that you've never been asked but would have liked to. So what is that question and what would be your answer? Um, I think, you know, a question that I get, I'm going to sort of like flip this on its head a little bit. I think a question that I get asked a lot, people are, people say like, how do you know how to sign someone? And how do you, like, what are you looking for? And, you know, like what, how many Instagram followers do they need to have or, you know, whatever. And I think, you know, I guess the question that I, that, that I think is a little bit, you know, it needs to be tweaked a little bit is like, what are you it's not necessarily about looking for a specific thing. I think it's, it's more like, what are you, you're looking for almost like a partner mm -hmm. and um, you know, what are, maybe it's, what are you not looking for and what are you um, and then how do you turn that into a business? Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, what, you know, a lot of what I look for and a lot of how I build my artist businesses have not almost, you know, we're very lucky that in, at least in Los Angeles, like you're surrounded by exceptionally talented people. So it almost feels like everyone is talented and that's sort of just like the baseline level. But the things that I look for are really more like, you know, do they have that hustle in them? Do they have that hunger? Are they willing to do whatever it takes? And are they willing to really go the distance? And, you know, and then turning that into a business is an entirely different thing. You know, there's some artists that want to make art and not this and not, you know, that doesn't necessarily translate to building a business. And mm. um, for me, it's, there, there are a lot of decisions that have to be made that uh, really mean that it's a business versus an art project too. Um, and, you know, what, just kind of how that looks. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's important also to know, which something that I've heard a lot recently is that you can't want it more than the artist. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've had to learn that lesson many times over in my <laughs> career. Um, and it was something that I heard, you know, older people say over the mm -hmm. years and I never quite understood it. And I think, you know, it's, and I've done that a few times where I have wanted it more and it always, you know, you can get that to a point, but at a certain point, um, the artist has to want it in that bigger, major way. Uh, and you can't, you know, there's, there's, they either want it or they don't, and you can't, uh, set your own expectations on, on what an artist should be. So before we end it all, I would love to know if there's a specific artist in your entire career. It doesn't have to be from God mode, but, uh, a time where you were signing someone or bring them onto your business. And what did that like feel like for you? Honestly, usually like the things that I'm excited about are not things that are necessarily excited, exciting for <laughs> other people. Um, and that tends to be my business model is that I find something that I'm excited about and nobody cares. And, until, <laughs> and, and then the music industry is everyone is, you know, everyone's kind of followers. And so yeah. nobody cares until everybody cares. And so, you know, for me, I'm always like, I feel like I have like a secret that nobody else knows about and I'm going to suddenly like let everyone in on the secret and they they'll be naysayers. My favorite is when I will send it to a, 
you know, a potential team member, like an agent or a publicist, and then they pass. And then later they, two years later, they'll come <laughs> back and say, Hey, this is actually mm-hmm. really cool. And I'm like, well, you're too late. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think like, for me, it's like, I love feeling like I have a secret that nobody else knows about. And I can see, you know, the potential of an artist or what a business could be and, and what it could look like um, before everyone else. And that, that to me is like the, the joy in a lot of this. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, it's working out so far. <laughs> getting there, getting there. <laughs> well, Talia, it has been so great having you on tonight. I appreciate you taking the time to chat. To all my listeners, I know you enjoyed hearing from Talia just as much as I enjoyed speaking with her. So stay tuned for next week's episode of 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. See you next time. <laughs>